Welcome to Lakeside Community Lutheran Church as we commemorate the day of Pentecost here today. As you see, this, uh, the uh, color red here is very prominently displayed here as the gift of the Spirit comes to us on the gift of Pentecost. In our service for today, we'll be using a dialogue for Pentecost, singing many of the Pentecost hymns, and then in addition to that, uh, the profession of faith will be the explanation of Luther's Catechism, the third article. So welcome here today. Next Sunday then will be a Memorial Day emphasis on Memorial Day weekend, and actually the day of Pentecost in the liturgical year comes next week, but I'm using it this week in order to accommodate next week for, for Memorial Day. And uh, we're glad then for Luther Park uh, uh, camp staff to be coming on June 4th then, and uh, they'll be taking the part of the message there and uh, word and song, and that will be uh, a delightful time, and I hope you look forward to it and spread the word as well. And summer services begin on June 7th. Uh, this coming Tuesday, then, at 1 p.m., will be a joint meeting of the Council and Finance Committee. Uh, this comes at the request of the Finance Committee at their meeting on Monday. So be in prayer for the gift of the Spirit, then, and wisdom and discernment in our congregational leadership. Our thoughts, prayers, and acts of concern go out to the family of John LeMay on his death, and especially his wife, Kathy. Any further announcements here this morning? Again, we welcome you here today, and we begin then with our call to worship. or confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly, perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And our gathering song, a Pentecost hymn about the Spirit, O Holy Spirit, enter in.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Dialogue for Pentecost. Alleluia! The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Alleluia! With tongues of fire, the Spirit kindles the apostles' zeal. Blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless you, Jesus, in now and forever. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful people with your love. And our song of praise, Come the Font of Every Blessing. The prayer of the day. O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things, and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Also with you. Invited to share a greeting of peace. <clears throat>
Good morning. morning. (laughs) First reading is from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. Suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this second, and at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, that they're filled with wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy." and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 104, verses 24 through 34 and 35b, to be read responsibly. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There go the ships to and fro, and Levithian, which you made for the sport of it. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Lord, Second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 3b through 13. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the work of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, 
so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I have sent you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. People of God sent by Jesus, grace be unto you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. This is the gift given to you today as we commemorate the day of Pentecost. Most Pentecost days I get out one of my bookmarks that I've saved through the years, and I rehearse some of the background then of Pentecost. I've uh, kept it a few years ago. On the bottom of it says, uh, Aid Association for Lutherans and Lutheran Brotherhood. So this predates Thrivent Financial for Lutherans, so I've had it around for a while. Well, anyway, it says Pentecost Day is celebrated exactly 50 days after Pentecost, or seven weeks after Easter. And again, as I explained in the announcements, I've moved it up a week here to uh, have a special emphasis on Memorial Day next week. But it then comes 50 days after Easter. It's the Jewish festival Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. Originally it celebrated the gathering of the wheat harvest. Later it became a celebration of God's giving the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. In the Christian year, Pentecost celebrates the day the Holy Spirit was given to the followers of Jesus to preach the good news. It's oftentimes called the birthday of the Christian church. The color is red then for the fire of the Holy Spirit and for the blood of the brave Christians who gave their lives. And the color for the season of Pentecost is green. And the key symbols are the Holy Spirit, flames of fire, and the dove, green leaves and plants, and the sun are symbols of the long Pentecost for growth. Now oftentimes we think of Pentecost then from the account of the Acts of the Apostles. And that's the day in which the uh, Spirit is given. I uh, oftentimes say to myself, I feel sorry for the lector who was assigned the day of Pentecost, the Acts of the Apostles. It's kind of that long list there, and invariably, it didn't happen this year with Dave, but invariably the lector will come up to me and says, how in the world do I pronounce these names? And I say, well, if I was doing it, I'd probably say this, and then this, and then I say, just keep going. <laughs> well, today then is the uh, day of Pentecost, and uh, oftentimes then uh, the focus is on the Acts of the Apostles. But this uh, morning then, I would like to focus then on the Gospel text for today, uh, Sent by Jesus. And uh, this actually occurs then on Easter Sunday then, as Jesus comes to his disciples. He appears to his disciples then, and uh, even, and, uh, in the evening of that day, the first day of the week, and we find out the disciples there were... Uh, Behind closed doors, they're afraid for their lives. Actually, the, uh, 
the, the Roman Empire has put their leader to death and uh, at the behest then of the Jewish leaders. And so who's to say that they aren't going to come after them next? And Jesus comes to them and he, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And uh, as the Father has sent me, so I sent you. This Easter day then, Easter Sunday then, is the day then in which Jesus gives to you and to me the gift of the Spirit. And as people who have been given the gift of the Spirit, we too can live out that gift in our lives as well. Now, uh, find out then that um, Jesus has given to us the gift of the Spirit, and even so in our lives as well then, in the life of this congregation, we are gathered under the mission statement. The ministry of Lakeside Community Lutheran Church is called by God to grow spiritually, welcome graciously, love unconditionally, and serve together faithfully as followers of Jesus Christ. And so as we commemorate this day of Pentecost then, it's helpful to be reminded then of our mission statement. And uh, even as uh, Martin Luther liked to uh, make those verbs crackle in his explanation, we could say that the verbs are here to grow, welcome, love, and serve. And because of that, then, we live out our mission statement here at Lakeside Community Lutheran Church. Well, at the uh, ascending part of the service, then, we have the dismissal. Go in peace, proclaim the good news, or go in peace, serve the Lord. And this becomes our sent by Jesus as well. And as you go forth from this place, then, you see the signs, then, one in each uh, exit way so you can't miss it, you are now entering into the mission field. You and I have been sent by Jesus to live out our lives in this way. Now, uh, um, I know Bishop Peterson a number of years ago when he gave at a synod assembly, he told a story of uh, Elvis has left the building. <laughs> Elvis has left the building. Well, at, uh, as we remember it down here today in the 1970s, it was uh, made by the announcer then to say that he's left the building, there's no need to stand around and ask for an encore. Elvis has left the building. But originally then, in 1956, when Elvis was singing as part of the Louisiana Hair Ride, he was just one of the uh, performers in the acts there. And uh, unfortunately then, when he got done singing, uh, many of them left the building, so the announcer in that said, Elvis left the building as a way to say, remain in your seats, because there are more singers to come. Well, today we can say, kind of an adaptation of that, the church has left the building. And so in the sending part of the service, and the dismissal part of the service, go in peace, serve the Lord, or go in peace, proclaim the good news, we can say, the church has left the building. Oftentimes we think of a church as a, a, a building here, but uh, the church, as we are reminded then in that uh, Sunday school uh, finger play, this is the church, this is the steeple, look inside and see all the people. Well, the church then leaves the building, and as our Lord comes to us today, we are sent by Jesus. Now, in, um, when I came to serve among you as your interim pastor, uh, in the um, letter of agreement then, it says, together the congregation and interim pastor will. And during this transition period, agreed to address the following specific concerns. One of them was variety and styles of worship, and the other was outreach. And so uh, I can say here today, uh, one of the uniqueness about worshiping here at Lakeside Community Lutheran Church is the church building, is it not? I mean, we're right here by a lake. And uh, I don't know if more people kind of sit on the right so they can look down at the lake, uh, whereas others may like to look here at the uh, patio here. But we certainly have a unique location to, to, uh, in which to worship. We do not, and we are very blessed by that. In a few weeks then, a uh, number of uh, our people will be gathering then at the lake sign, uh, even as this began as a lakeside worship, and doing so then to look right out at the lake as well. And so we're blessed by God then uh, in this uh, place then to be people who are in fact Lakeside Community Lutheran Church. We are glad here too to have, uh, uh, our, I'm, one of the things I enjoy about uh, serving here is worshiping with our uh, worship and music committee and we uh, heard from our uh, uh, 
chair then of the committee here. He was reading the lesson here for today. And uh, he and the rest of the committee then break, bring a great deal of passion then to uh, involvement, participation in the life of this worship then in order to invite people to graciously worship with us in order to be sent forth from this. I know even as you heard Dave uh, read the lesson for today, he sent an email this past week and a worship service he was working for in August and a couple of other gospel music events, even as they send kind of a gospel music type song here today. So we are certainly glad for that. A variety in worship then, just this past month, for instance, uh, last Sunday, of course, we had Mother's Day service, and then next week we'll be having Memorial Day service as a way then to have a variety in our worship service. So gathered by the Spirit and the Spirit working through us then, we can worship God in that way. Well, the other uh, part then, that uh, special concern then by the uh, letter of agreement then was uh, the gift of outreach then. And uh, our finance committee and uh, council will be meeting this coming Tuesday. And one proposal that our finance committee uh, is making then is that the finance committee recommends that the council consider forming an ad hoc committee too uh, for a uh, volunteer events coordinator, uh, create brainstorm a list of activities and events that will bring people into the church, especially new and younger people, and refine and prioritize the list and find volunteers willing to implement the activities and events. And so your leadership then uh, will be working on that this coming Tuesday then as a way of uh, carrying out then uh, this goal then, a part of the uh, letter of agreement then that uh, I engaged in with, with uh, leadership. Uh, it's been almost a year ago now. And uh, we look forward to carrying that out as a way in which we can people live out outreach and uh, and uh, variety and worship. Now, uh, in the mission site profile then, it talks about here one of the key statements then, and this is the statement that kind of goes out to uh, potential candidates then. And the last part of it says, we seek a pastor who will lead us in faith, care for us in our Lakeside community, join with us and support us in our many ministries, as well as help guide the development and implementation of a mission plan designed to ed engage, educate, and welcome individuals and families in the surrounding community to join our church family. Now, there's kind of a, a mouthful there, but basically it talks about in an intentional way then to engage then in this kind of outreach that is called for in the letter of agreement. And in addition then, our gospel text for today, sent by Jesus. Well, uh, one of the books then that a call committee uh, got and is called The Agile Church, Spirit-Led Innovation in Uncertain Age. And um, Dwight J. Gilly, and he's from Luther Seminary. And, uh, and my email log is uh, almost invariably uh, notes from the uh, Faith Network of which he's uh, a leader then. And uh, one of the, uh, kind of as a conclusion, it puts it this way. This book has explored how God chooses and calls ordinary people like us into open-ended journeys of learning and discovery. These journeys are not intended merely for our own personal fulfillment, but involve connecting with neighbors for the sake of sharing in God's healing of the world. In other words, God's healing of us doesn't end with us, but by its very nature links us in relationship with others. And then the next um, uh, sentence then speaks to our text for today. God's coming to us is always a sending of us. God's coming to us is also always a sending of us, even as we are sent by Jesus. As we have seen, these biblical journeys are not predicated upon our getting it all right, but rather on our willingness to trust in the one who claims and sends us and to be led by the spirit of life, even if we are led far from home. Mistakes and failures that lie along these paths are integral to our growing up in Christ, not disqualifications from the journey. And then he puts it this way. The church must renew its vision by more deeply inhabiting the central stories in which it finds its identity, even and especially amidst the dislocations of our contemporary world. Well, on the other part, then, this, it's, it's meant to be a discussion book and, and uh, ask for discussion. And uh, one of the things about the Agile Church, it talks about the ability to be uh, agile. So in other words, uh, kind of light on your feet. So if you're light on your feet like this, it's different than... 
So uh, to be agile here is, where is innovation currently taking place in the life of your church or church system? How is that innovation connected to the rest of the church's life? How might it be more deeply connected? And what might need to be borrowed and forgotten for the sake of learning in your church? And so today then we hear uh, from Jesus then, sent by Jesus. And he comes on this text here and says, even as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Well, a part of it then is the uh, connections then that uh, we have here. And you hear that long list then of all the people who were gathered in Jerusalem at that particular time, and many of them kind of with unpronounceable type names, but they all heard it in their own language. And uh, here at a &H, then, we have three different congregations, don't we? We have uh, our Evangelical Lutheran in America congregation with a Roman Catholic church, and then we have Christian Fellowship Church, which is more of a non-denominational, which is not connected to any particular non uh, any denomination. So one of the uh, congregations would, would probably be characterized then as more hierarchical, the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, we have one which is more uh, independent type, Christian fellowship, and then one here is uh, walking together is the definition of the word synod then, and we have a sense of walking together uh, with others. In the uh, letter of agreement then, it talks about um, in this way, to, um, to be able to uh, come together and uh, put it this way, examine the, uh, together the congregation interim pastor will examine the congregation's connection with synod, conference, church-wide units, and the resources that may be available for ministry. Now, it probably happens most clearly then during this kind of period, uh, during the call process then, and, uh, but it happens uh, many other ways as well. On uh, June 4th, then, we'll be able to appreciate one of our partner agencies as a uh, group from Bi uh, our Luther Park Bible Camp will be coming here. And uh, they'll be sharing uh, what is normally the message time in word and song. So the executive director and some of our staff uh, will be coming. So I hope you look forward to that as one of our partner agencies. I was uh, kind of interested then in looking at the um, uh, newsletter that came out here. and. Uh, Camp has kind of changed since I was going to camp back in the 60s and 70s here. And uh, wouldn't you know, here's one camp, it says Grand Camp, where grandparents and grandchildren get to experience camp together. This half week is all planned for you, so you just get to come and enjoy making memories together. How about that? So we have here the uh, Bible camp is uh, in many different ways, and we look forward uh, to that. Um, one of the things that I've done here as your interim pastor as well, is uh, led in a process called Transition Dynamics and uh, had a sermon series about that uh, last year and then we kind of been going through that every council meeting. We meet every other month, so it's been uh, every other month. Heritage, identity, vision, mission, leadership. And so the last one then has to do with connections, sense of cooperation, who are the partners and mission God provides, and explore all the relationships a congregation shares beyond its help. And so we're glad for the many connections that God gives to us, especially do we give thanks to God on this day, the day of Pentecost. All the people were gathered together. They heard the Spirit speaking to them, even though they spoke different languages. Sent by Jesus. The original disciples hear that. They're fearful for their own lives, yet Jesus comes to them and says, Peace be with you. Even as the Father has sent me, so I sent you. And so the message for you today as well, even as the Father has sent me, so I send you. You have been claimed by God in baptism are those who are invited then to be sent forth from this place, sent by Jesus in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our uh, hymn of the day then, for today then, is Lord you give the Great Commission.
For a profession of faith, then, I invite you to join in as we use the third article on being made holy from the small catechism by Martin Luther. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. What does this mean? I believe that I am. and our prayers on. Rejoicing in the wonder of new life in Jesus Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. O God, holy flame, kindle in your church a spirit of proclamation. May we spread the good news of Christ's resurrection and speech and sign, even as we are sent by Jesus. O God, holy dove, send to your world a spirit of peace. May nations, tribes, and nations be set free from bonds of hatred and violence, and discover lasting peace. We pray especially for your gift of peace as this world seems hurtling towards World War III. O God, holy comforter, anoint the suffering with the spirit of healing. May the sick, the mourning, the sorrowful, and the dying be sustained by your saving breath. Even as we bring before you those for whom prayers are requested, Marilyn, Clint, Anne, John, Tom, Faith, Mark, Barb, Dorothy, Michael, those fighting addictions, people in crisis, deployed military and families, leaders, children, and peace in Ukraine, as well as all others whom we name in our cards at this time. O oh God, work through your people sent by Jesus. Even as we ask for a special prayer for the Spirit upon leadership, Congregational Council and Finance Committee convening in a joint meeting this coming Tuesday. We pray, O oh Lord, for future direction of this congregation during this interim period and beyond. And pray, O oh Lord, that you will give a sense of direction to your people. O oh God, we pray for our ability to pass on the faith which we have been given to the Vacation Bible School this coming summer. Be with all those who teach and lead as well as all of our learners and participants. And, O oh God, through the gift of the church, we give you thanks for the wider church, for the three congregations here at ANH, for the churches throughout the whole world, all who name the name of Jesus. We give you thanks for our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, in particular our conference synod and churchwide, Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran World Federation, Lutheran Social Services, all the different Bible camps, especially our Luther Park at Danbury, many in other ways we seek to work together to do the work that we cannot do alone. And O oh God, Holy Trinity, remember be with thanksgiving those who have died in the faith, and may with we, with all the saints, be drawn into your divine communion, which has no end. Comfort the family and friends of John LeMay upon his death, especially his wife, Kathy. And give to them the hope of eternal life. O oh God, even as your spirit makes Jesus present, we give you thanks for his presence here today in bread and wine. And strengthen us in this eating and drinking 
that we may go forth from your place sent by Jesus. And accept these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, O God, for the sake of the crucified and risen one, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of prayer, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. Jesus was lifted up from the earth. Draw us to your cart in the midst of this world. All creation brought bondage to freedom, darkness to light, and from death to life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the meal, for all is now ready.
God, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sending song, O day full of grace.